Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne Barrett Justice, and in this video, we're going to paint this horse right here. And if you have watched one of my previous videos, I showed you how I started this, basically this underpainting with pan pastels, and then did my oil application on top. Well, you can check that video out. Uh, it's down, you'll, you'll see it here. I'll probably post it up here on the top so you can go ahead and check it out as well. And, uh, but we will take you step by step on this one from start to finish and in a matter of, well, minutes, because it's time lapse, right? So thanks for joining me. If you are my subscribers, as always, thanks so much. And if you're not, consider subscribing. And without further ado, let's jump in to painting this horse. So I've got my sketch that I just did a rough sketch with some vine charcoal and I'm filling in, basically doing a value study with my uh, pan pastels. Now I had gotten uh, my pan pastels from um, Jerry's Artorama and they're pretty nifty. I have to say this is kind of a neat way to start a piece and uh, you'll be able to see that video. I This was a previous video that I just did the full length version of just doing this um, sketch and my experience with working with the pan pastels. And I'm going to show you that I have two application sticks here in a minute because I'm going to figure out that I need one for light colors and one for dark colors. And I can actually blend with these applications and, and um, load color just like I do with acrylic. So that's why I was showing you the two separate sticks because I'm actually using, see right here, I've got two separate, one for light, one for dark colors. And that's allowing me to do, basically, I'm carving this out. Um, so I'm putting my dark values in. 
This is actually a pretty cool way, folks, to do an underpainting because this is happening relatively quickly and I can adjust as I go. The kneadable eraser takes this stuff right off. It's, it's wonderful. And I'm here to tell you folks, I will be doing underpaintings this way again. Okay, so this is where I'm leaving off with the pastels. Here you can see there's the photo reference that I'm working on or from, and the, uh, the original photographer, her name is Sarah Olive, and I will leave a link to this particular picture. Uh, I went, of course, to a free site to get it, and I just liked how this little mare looked. So, um, yeah, you know what? Pan pastels may be a neat way to go as far as just getting a piece blocked in. You know, I can go ahead and play with the values. It's easily erased. Um, if I need to make a lot more adjustments to the head or whatever, I feel like it's easy enough to do. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. All right, as I had mentioned earlier, you know, I'm just gonna be starting in one small area and working on the muzzle. So the paints that I've squirted out are basically what I consider muzzle colors. <laughs> background colors okay so i may have some colors repeated but i started out this is ivory black this is raw umber this and those are both uh windsor newtons this is a color called blush by gamblin i have um cadmium yellow light i have yellow ochre titanium white these are some of the colors from the 12 shades of gray this is the green gray, this is the warm gray, and I just happen to have Windsor Newton Payne's gray. For the background colors, I have Richardson's olive green, I have Windsor Newton's sap green, I have Charvin's um, Celadon deep, and a more titanium white. And I am not squirting out a lot, even though we're working on, our substrate happens to be, a, ooh, is it a 36 by 36 canvas? Okay, so that's what we're gonna start with and let's see how we roll. All right, so I am taking a little bit of uh, my background color, which happens to be Richardson's um, olive green and it's mixed with a little sap green and umber. And I'm cutting in around the muzzle area of the horse and I can make corrections on the fly here. Uh, the pan pastel is a lot like when I work with my vine charcoal. It becomes part of the painting and it kind of the, the pigment sort of mixes with the oil paint and it's really kind of, it's kind of nice. So I can still make corrections as I go. And um, so I'm just blocking this in and I'm using an ivory number six, I believe, um, Filbert which is really nice. And I'm trying here to stay localized in one area. So by keeping that wet edge, when I work that muzzle in, uh, I'll be able to keep it nice and soft. Uh, you know how much I love my wet edges. So I do wanna make a comment about the fact that this does have somewhat of a distortion to it because of the angle of my camera. Now, I promise you, this horse's muzzle is not quite this big, but it's kind of serendipitous for us while we're watching this that it looks like it's huge, so you can see it better. That just kind of happened, but I have my mall stick down just so I have something to lean up on and keep my hand off the pan pastel and be able to uh, steady my hand. So I am using a, uh, this I believe this is a smaller ivory filbert here and uh, just doing the applications and putting my dark values in. So I'm going directly right over the pan pastel. And I will say that when you are putting oil paint over pan pastel, you'll notice that there's a little bit of, you don't have quite the grip at first, but when you're putting enough paint down, 
There's plenty of grip and the paint sticks great. Everything works wonderfully. Now you're going to see that I'm using a lot of um, you know reflective colors. So you see a lot of greens and yellows going into this horse's muzzle and that's simply because those are the colors that are reflected and I see that in my reference and of course I will leave a link um, to the actual site where I have this reference so you can use it as well if you choose to follow along. But I'm using a number two Eclipse Long Filbert here and it does have a little bit of the softness to the brush that allows me to do the blending right on the spot. So you'll see I'll even roll the edges uh, in the direction that that bottom lip is going. So you'll see I'll go in that exact direction. So I need to go ahead and put my dark values in and I have mixed um, several different grays here and believe it or not all these grays do include a little bit of the um, um, Richardson's um, olive green and there's a lot of browns and I'm also using to help um, create the um, tones that I need. I'm using a lot of the Sennelier's natural tint into the mix here. So I'm going in around these grays and I'm, I'm keeping it wet. I'm obviously working with a longer or larger um, Eclipse filbert here. I believe that's probably a number six or eight because this is a pretty big painting and I need to get a lot of the paint down. And so once I get a large volume of paint, then I switch to a smaller brush and put a little bit of the lighter values down and so forth. And I'm just constantly blending from side to side there's a lot of color shifts and temperature shifts and value shifts even in these grays within the muzzle area and that's what helps create the form. So I have to be very conscious and this is one of the reasons I chose to stay localized. You can see I'm mainly just working on the muzzle and I basically take the muzzle eh, to near completion in this piece because I can work in one small area, keep, keep my uh, background colors wet so that I can keep those soft edges and continue to work that area of paint until basically I can't put any more detail in because it's too wet so I'll move on but I almost basically take this muzzle to completion before I go to another area. This is kind of a unique approach for me because I am usually all over a canvas when I'm working so, so staying focused and, and like this is it's challenging but this piece was a fun piece because I did a lot of different stuff with this. Um, you can see I used my paint scraper and kind of scraped out some of those little whiskers and hairs that's uh, sticking out on the muzzle. And now I'm undercutting underneath the jawline and I absolutely love the highlight that you see 
It's kind of the backlighting of that little fuzzy hair under the jaw area of the horse. This is a sorrel horse, so they do have a lot of um, reds and yellows in their coat naturally. Uh, so this is just kind of fun. This is just a fun, fun piece, folks. You got to know that. So just to show you a little real time, we're getting just a little bit more of the color down. And you can see my reference that's there on the right. And my eye is almost glued to it constantly as I'm just laying down the color. And so when I can, I'll use the larger brush. And you can see I'm using a stroke that follows the contour of the horse's shape. And I'm not saying you have to understand the anatomy of anything, whether it's a horse or a bear or whatever, but it helps to be very observant when you're looking to see which direction uh, the structure is or the hair flows or whatever. And I try to keep my brush strokes in that very same direction. So here you can see um, a side by side of the reference and the area that I'm actually painting. Again, I'm going to remind you that there is a distortion uh, in, from my camera angle from where I'm painting. So I promise you, the horse's muzzle is not that big. But you can see the subtleties in some of the color of just the grays and the, and the browns and the reds. And there's lots of fun color shifts. So you have to be quite mindful of all of those things. So now I'm going to go ahead and just start to put down the structure of the eye. And of course, I do have the pan pastel outline area, but I've got to firm everything up, right, with this oil paint. So I, and of course, let's face it, the eyes, that's always the best part, or I should say it's my favorite part of almost any animal species I paint. And I really want to get this just so. So I'll start with an, basically an ivory black and keep in mind it is kind of mixing in with my uh, uh, pan pastel which is actually okay it doesn't it it's kind of a good thing uh, sorry about the head it kind of gets in the way sometimes but um, yeah I'm going to go ahead and start laying in the color and the color that I'm putting for the eyeball or the iris is a combination of cadmium red and a little bit of black so it's a shade of cad red it's a very intense dark rich brown and on the very top of the ball eyeball i'm putting kind of a light purple you know there's a little bit of purple that's mixing in and a little bit of gray that's mixing in because keep in mind the light source is probably coming from the top the eyeball is round so your eyeball itself is going to catch quite a bit of light so i'm putting in the light where i see it now uh, I like to use kind of a light turquoise. You've all heard me talk about it before. That turquoise always just lightens up the eye nicely. And I am using a pointed round, which happens to be an eclipse pointed round. And it's a smaller one. It's probably number two. And that is where I'm putting in the eye, you know, the sclera part. And keep in mind, usually scleras are almost never completely white. So I've used quite a bit of... Uh, um, I believe there's a little bit of cad yellow and uh, maybe even a yellow, little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm just, uh, you know, you see, I'm just putting in the structures. And of course, as the, those folds roll, they're going to be darker, closer to the actual crease. And then as they roll out, there's usually going to be a point where there's a highlight on each roll. So I'm being very conscious of that as well as where the, the tear uh, line of the uh, lower eyelid goes. And I'm trying just to get all the structure. Keep in mind, I have my eyes glued onto my reference. So when you see that pause, I'm actually looking at the uh, reference, really studying it. And, you know, I have a pretty good memory, <laughs> but it's not a photographic memory. So I usually keep my reference pretty darn close when I'm working, just so I can make sure that I'm actually catching it right. And uh, so I'll move back and forth between the, the dark areas, the light areas, etc., of this eyeball until I feel like I've got it just so.
Now I feel like I need to add quite a bit of the exterior color around the eye uh, to be able to blend things properly. So if I have an area that, say it's a reddish colored horse, in this case a lot of burnt sienna and yellow ochre, oftentimes I'll use the complement to give it a little bit of a, a brown it up or cool it down. And in this case I am using, believe it or not, a lot of green uh, to brown down my burnt siennas. And you know, creating the shapes. Now, of course, this is the known as the bar area on the horse's uh, anatomy on his face. And so I am uh, highlighting that area and low lighting other areas and going back and forth throughout the paint. But I do need to have that area around the eye kind of wet so I can blend where I need to blend. So I'm going ahead and putting some more paint into the horse's actual head or front of his face. And to do this dark color here, I'm using a combination of, um, believe it or not, sap green, cadmium red, and maybe a little ivory black. I may also be using a color that I really like called Purple Lake. Um, all of these are, you know, just to create my dark values. And if I have something that's too red, like right there, it was, too, I needed a dark color. I'm adding a little bit of sap green to it. So I've got to, I'm going up to the top of the head here and I need to have that wet edge to work into. So I'm going to have to go back up on the top and put in the background color because I got to have my wet edge, right? So here I go cutting it in and I can make corrections. If I have areas that I put in with the pan pastel that perhaps is not refined enough, no problem, just cover it right over. Uh, Arabians have very, very refined heads and I really wanna chisel this out to make it look nice. And uh, so yeah, that's what you see me doing here and I do need to have that wet edge to work into to create the front of this horse's face. into some highlights on the horse and I added um, of course I had the cadmium yellow light I added a little bit of cadmium yellow pale this is Indian yellow and pyrrole orange I wanted to add that um, of course I've got my burnt sienna and I also have cadmium red and um, purple matter so I just want to go ahead and clarify that what you're going to see me doing the highlights in will be combinations of pretty much these colors here, okay?
As I'm putting in these bright, bright cadmium yellow highlights in the front of the neck, it's the same light that's catching underneath the jaw. And again, talk about silly angles. Now the muzzle looks really tiny, doesn't it? Almost looks like I have a quarter horse instead of an Arabian. Uh, yeah, funny thing about uh, camera angles, right? So I'm laying in this uh, these colors and knowing that the front of the neck is very hot in temperature, but as I move through the shadows, everything cools down quite a bit. So I am mixing, believe it or not, again, a lot of greens into my um, burnt sienna or body colors of this horse, which um, as I showed you earlier, what um, what those colors actually are and know that at, in the end I'm going to go back over this palette just a little bit more to show you how my palette is broken up into main colors, body colors, uh, muzzle colors, background colors. It's all broken up. And so yeah, I am just kind of doing a delineation of all the areas of the neck and here, you know, I, again, having to have a wet surface to work into, I'm doing a lot of the background so that I can do the main. Now I used my uh, my little uh, paint scraper to scrape out some of the little fine hairs in the mane, the little wispy hairs. So those aren't actually painted in, those are scraped off. So that's why I had to work into wet paint because if this was dry, I couldn't have scraped it off obviously. So I'm using one of my big brushes. I'm using this big boy and popping down a lot of the large amount of, you know, blocking in color. Keep in mind, a mane doesn't have to be each individual strand of hair. You can, <clears throat> excuse me, put in blocks. It, it's more successful if you do it that way. And then you go in and you put in some strands. But I think people get sometimes lost in the detail, miss the big picture, and just keep putting in little hairs. So I'm actually putting in some of the background or body color of the horse behind that, that forelock or that front part of, her, of his mane and working on that ear and, you know, I've got to get everything just so and placed in the right order for this to make sense. So you're going to go ahead and see here in a second the actual reference picture. And you can see the area that I'm working. Um, I've, I've got to keep... And it's interesting, I'm looking at this picture now as I'm, um, I'm doing this voiceover, and it does look a lot greener or browner, but trust me, the, the photo reference is, is quite uh, warm. Um, but anyhow, I am putting in this, this mane and working on this for a while, and I am using my, one of my favorite brushes, which everybody knows is the, uh, one of the sword brushes here in a minute. Uh, I'm putting in some of the shadows in the crest of the horse's neck, and I've got to do the detail in the ear as well. But when you see me working on the mane, I'm almost always using um, the one of the sword or dagger brushes by Rosemary. Generally, I use ivories, but they do make them in a lot of different um, other um, hairs, and um, whether they're synthetics or naturals, they've got several different daggers. But yep, getting it all in, getting all the details in, and you know what, folks, I'm feeling pretty good about this piece, and I can tell you it's gonna wrap up fat sooner than later. And here's a little bit of uh, uh, sword or dagger brush action here. I'm putting in a lot of the little hairs and the highlights over the light part of the hair. Um, you can see, it's it, this is all dagger brush. So I believe I'm using a, uh, a, a quarter inch dagger to get this in. So yeah, I am totally digging this. I'm doing a lot of the finer brush work. So you can see here I'm using one of the smaller uh, believe it or not, this is, I don't think this is a pointed round. This is actually a one of the smaller Eclipse filberts that I'm using and just doing the highlight. Again, I'm, believe it or not, I am working in wet on wet here. And that was part of my challenge on this piece was to really not depend on a dry piece to create the, da uh, the detail. 
uh, all of this is pretty much wet on wet because I'm only working in small areas at a time and I constantly am refining and you can see I'm going back in putting a little bit more dark value in the background reshaping some of the eye and uh, you know I'm tweaking it up a little bit but this is getting down to the fun part so where you see I'm putting in this area of the star or the this part of the blaze on the horse's head that's actually the white part of the canvas okay I hadn't actually painted there yet so I'm putting a lot of the dark values down first that I can paint on top of. And so that's what you see me putting in there now. Um, it's funny, I, I can really tell you there's not a lot of paint there. I, I might have had a little bit down, just kind of an off-white, but I'm keeping it super simple. This, is, this has really been um, a challenge for me because it's kind of different than I use the way I normally paint. Is I usually put everything, I'll do a blocking in stage and have the whole thing, you know, it blocked in and then it almost dries out and then I go back and I paint. This was almost, um, each part was almost done in an a la prima fashion. So, but I can tell you, this was actually a pretty cool way to paint. I will definitely use the pan pastels again and I will definitely paint, especially with larger pieces like this, in small regions at a time and almost take it to completion so that, um, you know, it, it does have that, I don't know, the soft edge and the more painterly effect. Truly, truly have enjoyed the ride on this one. Now I'm getting down to pretty much just small brushwork at this point. And I'm putting in a little bit more grays around the muzzle area and lightening up some of the areas that I started with initially. And uh, yeah, I'm wrapping it up here. It's getting close. And uh, I do want to remind you folks, if there's anything that you have seen on this video that you're, you, know, you have a question about, whether it's um, a paint color, a technique, a particular brush, etc., please leave it in the comment section. I'll be glad to answer it. Now, interesting, I'm using a sword brush here. Uh, I know it's probably not evident at first, but I was using a sword brush. It's probably, I've already switched over to a long filbert, duh. But I am putting in a little bit of the detail, a little bit more of the texture, and, and I'm moving around this a little bit more than I was initially because I know that I'm gonna have to get everything down so I can, you know, wrap it up. I, I, I am putting in more and more structure, lighter values, more detail, all through this piece. and it's been a lot of fun. I, um, again, you can see I'm also following the contour of different parts of this horse's head and highlighting. Now, where the light's catching, uh, I'm, I'm putting a little bit more, uh, you know, just highlights even in the eyelids, uh, in the areas around these little veins that are popping out on this part, which is known as the bar. Top of the head, top of the eye, everything is getting a little bit more. Yeah, we're getting just a tying up loose ends, so to speak. Doing a little bit more um, brush work, and here we're going to talk about the palette. One minute now. Hmm, looks like a big old mess, right? It actually is organized, and if can, if you can believe it. Now here's my little area of greens, and I had sap green, celadon green, and um, an olive green here. And that was used mainly for the background color. Now I had some other background color here, but it, and it was kind of the lighter version on the lower end of the, um, of the canvas. And it had white and, and a little bit of celadon, a little bit of umber, and even a little bit of um, the cadmium yellow light. That has now morphed into the main colors. Now you can see these are a lot of the colors that I'm using in the main. So I have yellow ochre, a lot of white, a little burnt sienna, and actually I'm pulling some of the colors from up here down to this area. So I do have um, permanent orange, I have Indian yellow, I had cadmium yellow um, pale and cadmium yellow light. And those colors all ended up down here. And that has become a lot of the main colors. Now you're probably wondering, why did I take this color that I use in the background and start pulling it into the main? Well, there's a concept of called, you know, using dirty color that is, I like to, I don't, that has a bad connotation. I like using mother color. Um, 
I think it makes for a homogenous piece. If you can pull the colors, say from the background into the actual subject of the painting. So oftentimes I will pull the colors back into other aspects of the painting so that there is a kind of a harmonious look to the piece, okay? So this became the main colors. Now here I have titanium white and you can see I have different values and different temperatures on either side of, the, of that. Obviously this area is mainly the body and face, you know, the neck and the face colors, the body of the horse. And since this is a sorrel, I'm using uh, a lot of interesting colors here. I've got my burnt sienna and you can see I have several um, um, values here as well as diff different temperatures. I start pulling other colors in. I've been using a lot of this flesh and blush color up, up top here and pulling that into it because there is a coppery look to this to this horse and to make a good coppery look you gotta have some pinks and yellows kind of mixed in. So up here I have ivory black, I have um, burnt umber, I have raw umber and dioxazine purple and those colors are, are often the darker values that get mixed into eh, the shadows and the um, different parts um, where I need darker values. Okay, we talked a little bit about what's up here and how that is factored into whether it's the mane or the body of the horse. Over here, hmm, I've got some grays and these are 12 shades of grays. I have the green gray and I have the warm gray over here. I have, um, this is Payne's gray and this is the natural tint by Sinaye. And this is how I'm oftentimes taking these colors and toning, um, toning or graying up um, particular colors, which you'll see a lot of that happening in the muzzle region of the horse. So that kind of went into, so you can see that I'll have a little area of grays. Now we kind of move down here, down to the lower section of town here. I've got cadmium red. I have pearl, no, it's not purple lake. I think that is brown matter. And I have purple lake over here. And that's giving me some of the really, really dark values, whether it's in the neck or, you know, you can see some of the dark values that I'm using. If I need to red it up, I'm using these colors to have that redder look. And these are kind of the same concept, but for a brown or darker look. It's just a different dark value. So I just thought I, knew, I should explain this to you because trust me, I know where all my colors are and I know the purpose of each color. I don't have to search around very long to try to find what I'm looking for, for this painting. And unfortunately I can't have my, I just only have the one camera right now. So I'm only able to show you as I'm painting. So know that this is where I'm selecting my, <laughs> my paint and this is where it's all coming from. And I thought it deserved an explanation. Well, now we're getting down to the wire and I'm just moving through this piece and really seeing what things have yet to be done. And I'm doing more details and you can see there's a lot more going into the main. I'm doing a lot of the smaller detail work in the main and in the body. And I'm about to wrap this up, folks. This has been truly a, a fun ride. I have enjoyed every bit of this painting and know that I am using my sword brush on this one right there, right through here. That's all sword work right here, folks. at this and I'm trying to see where I you know what little details and knowing when to stop well that's always the hardest part so I'm kind of going over it I like what I've done with the mane the ear set looks good um, you know I'll, I'll just kind of look over it a little bit um, see if I need to put in any little hairs now I kind of cut in some hairs you can see around the muzzle just a little bit um, 
but I don't know that I have to do all of it that is actually in the picture. So, you know what, folks? This might actually just be finished. And I'm already excited to start another one. Of an I like doing horses, so it's fun for me to, to do this. So again, this is a 36 by 36 oil on canvas. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. So here's some of the details of the piece. I really started, if you'll remember, with the muzzle and I had so much fun. I did keep the um, background paint nice and wet so I can create that nice soft edge that you see right on the edges. And, you know, just really looking for the temperature shifts within the piece. I love this little bit of backlit uh, fuzzy fur that's on this uh, horse's um, jaw there. I love it, and that was fun. And of course, there's always the eye, and the eye of the horse is just well, you know, I like doing eyes, period, regardless of what species, but a horse's eye, especially this one, is just outstanding. It's just so much fun to paint. Of course, then we know how much I love using my sword and dagger brushes to do hair, and they really got to work out here. Um, you can see all kinds of hair layered up. Of course, this happens to be a sorrel colored horse, and so sorrels do have that flax and mane, so. There you have it, there's some of the detail. And the background was fun too, by the way, folks. I tried to stay pretty close to the way my reference picture looked, and I'll go ahead and put that reference picture off to the side here so you can see what I'm talking about. And I really like, let me back this out just a tiny bit. So I tried to keep the background pretty soft and very close to what the, um, the reference photo looked like. So yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. Ta-da! I hope you enjoyed watching today's video as much as I enjoyed painting this painting. It was so much fun, and I used to be a horse girl. I grew up with horses. I used to show them. I lived and breathed horses, and I don't have them now. So this is, this is fun for me, and know that you will probably see a lot more horse painting videos in the future because I had way too much fun with it. So again, thank you so much for joining me. And if you are my subscribers, as always, I appreciate you so, so very much. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. It's not hard. And uh, ring the bell so you'll know when the next video comes out. Who knows, it could be another horse video real soon. So thank you so much. From Kingsport, Tennessee, I'll see ya. Bye.